everybody. Wanted to do a short introduction to this special episode of Source Material. We are calling this Snap Material. Edmund Bevins and I had such a great time talking about this latest Marvel Mobile game that we decided to record our thoughts on last season's Into the Quantum Realm and the upcoming season, Days of Future Past. Our first part is going to be about the new battle mode and the cards released during Into the Quantum Realm. Let's get to the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an episode of the Source Material Comics podcast. Never came up with a title for this show. Snap Material. <laughs> Snap Material. I like it. Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. It's me. I'm Jesse Starcher. That's Evan Bevin sitting right over there. We're coming together to talk about the mobile game Marvel Snap. We had a, we had a show... Oh, it was a few months back where we tagged on a little bit of a Marvel Snap discussion to uh, some coverage for the Superblog team up where we were talking some Stan Lee stories. And I really wanted to keep talking about Marvel Snap because it is something that I have found myself playing a lot here lately. Evan, I told you I kind of gave you an idea of what the format's going to be tonight. We're going to talk about the last season and we're getting ready to go in. We're actually already in a new season right now as we record this. Last season was Into the Quantum Realm. We're uh, tying in with the uh, movie that's in theaters right now, The Jesus Revolution. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> oh, wait, my bad, my bad. Scream 6. <laughs> Scream 6, yes. Ghostface, crazy card to get right now, pretty unattainable <laughs> in Marvel Snap. Um, Gen the yeah. Jenna Ortega card is uh, is pretty popular, too. I got she, she is everywhere. Uh, the Wednesday variant is out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is yeah, what I think of with that one particular death variant. Uh, you're right. Yeah, it is pretty. Uh, it's pretty uh, comparable in into the quantum realm. So, yeah, just like you said, we're tying in with Ant-Man quantum mania. Uh, so we get some cards that were released this season and some locales that were centric to the quantum realm, not just in, you know, the movie universe we're talking about in the comic book universe as well so i figure what we'll do tonight we'll, we'll just kind of talk about our experience with the last season and the cards see if we ran into any of the cards that were that were released during this series now evan i don't pay for these games uh, or i should say i don't pay for this game i haven't i haven't like paid for a full season although i think it's very worth it only ten dollars to unlock, you know, a good bit of stuff during those ranks as you move up, and some of the cards that are uh, getting released during the season. So I, I don't know. Did you spring for the ten dollars this uh, this go round? No, I haven't done that. I I can't say I haven't spent anything on it, but um, I mean, as cool as some of the featured cards are, I'm having fun with with what I what I usually get. And if you if you're patient enough, I've got a I've got Black Panther pinned in the shop right now. I'm making my way there, but uh, I mean that—that's—that's that's the fun thing. I wouldn't be opposed to spinning. Like I said, I have uh, once or twice, but um, I mean it's. It's a game that you don't have to spend a lot on to to enjoy, especially um, not, not to get out of order, but with them adding the uh, you know the friendly battle feature, right. which is what right. got my brother and I into it in the first place. Was like, hey, this is something we both like, and we could could play together. Well, let's um, start there because. I remember when we first started playing the game, when I started playing the game, and then you and I were talking about it together. Uh, to me, I was like, I don't know if friendly battles are going to be the way to go with this thing. How are they going? Because I thought initially it was just going to be like a regular game between you and a friend that's on there. I didn't think it would be fun, but they added some elements to it, which made it different well the the main thing is um that it's a series instead of just a one-off battle and so you've got um how many is it is it eight or ten i want to say it's eight maybe yeah, it's like, ten like i can't remember points, for lack of a better term since these battles aren't ranked you're not um you know snapping to gain uh rankings or whatever each of those if you lose you lose the the amount you snap for. So if you complete a game and nobody snaps, you lose two of them. If you you know if one person snaps and you complete the game, you lose it, the person who loses loses four. And uh, you know if you, if you both snap and you lose, you can lose up to eight. Pretty cool. Uh, I think what is it by battle four, you have to start uh, risking two. Um, so that 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 makes it interesting. The the only downside I that I've seen to it at all. I wish you could like swap decks in between each game. Right. I agree. That's not necessarily a bad thing because then, you know, I, I know you and I were playing once. 
you ju- you just hit retreat and sacrificed one point uh, rather than let me drop uh, Deadpool out there. <laughs> Gosh. And of course, yeah. uh, when I finally got Deadpool, that deck was in response to just like the second or third game you and I played where you had a destroy deck and slaughtered me brutally. And so I made a deck that pretty much ripped yours off and then switched <laughs> like one card and was like, hey, I've got my own deck now. <laughs> The other thing that kind of I would say that is kind of a drawback as well is if you start out with a certain type of deck and you're there are some decks that have no answer for the deck that you're going up against. I know for a fact if I don't have Cosmo in there and you are relying on some heavy hitting like on reveal stuff, I might be I might be toast. Yeah. Right out the gate and sticking through three battles. Of course, you, you have the option to retreat and get the heck out of there if you know that's the way it's going to go. But normally, you don't want to, you know, I'm not I'm not going to do that if I'm playing up against somebody. I'm going to go through just try my best. But sometimes yeah. you are completely outmatched right out the gate. And unfortunately, there's just like you said, to kind of answer that switching decks mid game in between rounds, I guess you would say would be nice. Yeah. And I know my brother and I, the first couple of times we played, we both got kind of tired, even if one of us was using it of the, uh, long white tiger Odin combo. Oh, was very effective. But, uh, once you get beat by that, like three times in a row, you're, you're a little tired of seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Although like, okay. I don't know if it's other people getting tired of it or what. I, I don't get slapped with that as much as I used to. I, I, there First, is, then I started using it a lot too, so it's not. I like, was going to say there is there is a strong conversation to be had about the algorithm this game has when it comes to matchmaking, and I don't know if you hop onto Reddit very much or not, but there is a subreddit for Marvel Snap, and I get notifications of some of the more popular uh, threads that are happening in there, and the matchmaking has come up quite a bit. And here lately, I think that there was somebody that posted a, I think it was a tweet. It's either a tweet or maybe it was an interview. I don't know. But they they are actually doing some modifications for the matchmaking. Right now, we're, what, like two weeks into our newest season? Um, yeah, do you Do so. you feel that there's been any change in regards to matchmaking? I honestly don't think I'm a, <laughs> I'm an astute enough observer on <laughs> that um, with a, a lot of, like, the, the meta stuff. I, I just tend to see the... The smaller picture, I guess, sure, with, sure. with the games. So I know that this last season I kind of stalled out in the mid 40s and I couldn't really tell you if that was because of any overall trend or just uh, not not hitting pay dirt enough or, or what. But um, yeah, I, I got dropped down to I think it was 30s when the new season starts. They drop you back down. I thought it was one rank, but I, I was in the three. 60s. Now it's three. Yeah. yeah. So I got dropped down. I got dropped down to 30 and I was facing plenty of people that hit infinite last uh, season. And the only reason I know that is because their card back. If their card back had that infinite, that infinite hourglass, you could only get that if you hit 90 or above 99. So I've I've never made it that high. Me either. So I'm facing all these people that have, that have hit infinite level last season. And I'm like, okay, I'm potentially outmatched here, although I, th- I think I've held my own. But however, I mean, I really haven't made a whole lot of headway so far this season. I, I think I'm at 33 and I've played mm-hmm. quite a bit. So I'm I'm losing and winning. And I, I, I can say that I'm not really gambling and snapping a whole lot. Usually if somebody snaps against me, OK, good for them. But I'm not I, I, I don't use the snap to my advantage as much as I should. So that might be yeah. another reason as to why I'm not moving yeah. up too. same same here. I uh I'll be like, oh, I should have, I should have snapped there. And uh, so then the next game I'll be like, aha, I snapped. Yeah, and it, right. was, it was a premature snap. As if, <laughs> as if people couldn't tell, um, just to, to let any listeners out there like, what in the world are they talking about snapping? Snapping is a core mechanic in the game where you can, you, you're basically wagering cubes and the cubes factor into your rank. Higher, the higher rank you get, the uh, possibility of more unlocks. So there's an unlock at every, 10 levels and you've got to get so many cubes before you get to a level. Well, you wager these cubes every time you play and snapping doubles those cubes to where at the end of the game, you could potentially, if both people snap, there's a potential for eight cubes to be one lost. Uh, so anyway, is, I mean, and uh, ranks 10 cubes. So yeah, those, those can swing pretty quick. Right. Yeah, they can. I, I think my the, the best part about it is actually playing with somebody that I can like talk trash to. <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, as we are messaging back and forth and, uh, and I, and kinda... I have received some trash, uh, in messenger during games can confirm. <laughs> So, and I'm definitely glad that you can only do that with with people. You know, every once in a while, I wish there was some other comment or graphic I could send, and then I'm remember other interactions with strangers on the internet, and I'm like, no, 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 this is good. They do. We'll, uh, a- we'll both do pointing Spider Man when we uh, <laughs> each uh, reveal the same card. I'm I'm fine with that. <laughs> yeah, into the quantum realm. We had a total of four cards that released, and you tell me. I'm going to run down the cards here real quick. Modok, five energy, eight power. On reveal, discard your hand. Modok absolutely made me rely on Cosmo a lot during this season. How about you? What's your experience with Modok? Well, uh, I'm just glad that they found a way in this game to reflect the classic comic stories that we've all grown up with. Uh, where Modoc and Morbius are such an unbeatable team. <laughs> I actually Googled Modoc, Morbius, and Marvel, and all I got was references to Snap. Yeah, um, not happening. But, not a team uh, up. Yeah, and then or and, and I figure there's got to be some place where Modoc and Apocalypse met up because they just they seem like that they would uh, they would get along. Oh, yeah, right. But I, I, I that's that search uh, also revealed it revealed it. Never revealed uh, more more snap decks. I would see Modoc popping up. I could usually hold, hold my own with him. Um, I I don't mind discard decks. I actually went on a pretty good run at the start of this season with my own discard deck. But but I I never did get get Modoc. Uh, you so. could you could have. I mean, at, at the point where I was, all you had to do was filter out the word discard and just throw every single one of them in your deck, pretty much. If you had Hella, which I think I did buy from the shop, just so I could try to make discard work for me. Yeah. Um, if you had Hella, I mean, she helped a ton as well. Except but I always yeah. seem to get her uh, with Sif, another you know natural ally to <laughs> Apocalypse. And I always seem to get uh, Sif, Apocalypse, and Hella at the same time, and it feels like I always uh, discard Hella all at once. Right. So every once in a while, I can yoink her back with Ghost Rider. I don't know. Have have you been naming your decks? Some I have. Yeah, I, I didn't you know, even know you could do that. My brother told me that, and like I, I spent more time. This will give the the listeners an idea of my expertise. I I probably spent more time for a while there at naming decks than constructing decks. <laughs> so my discard deck, I shortened discard to disco, and then I called it Dazzler. Oh, nice. Nice. I don't have Dazzler yet. Um, oh, bummer. So, Perfect. well, because I couldn't, I also couldn't figure out if my opponents could see the names of my deck. So I didn't just want to call it the discard deck. Oh, right, right. So, yeah. I, so I'm pretty my, certain uh, they can't. My, my, yeah, I, I, I don't think so. But just in case, like my work in progress deck with uh, Red Skull, Typhoid Mary, Doc Ock, and other problematic villains, uh, it's got a black card back and it's codenamed 8-Ball. <laughs> nice. Very so, nice. Yeah. A um, lot, lot of good strategy here. I didn't have a lot of a lot of problems with with Modok. I, I, I think I did uh, have a couple times where somebody played him with Wong on Camartage, where your on reveal effects happen twice, and he discarded Apocalypse twice, which just uh, seemed excessive. Uh, but um, yeah, I Modok, uh, I, I I got used to seeing. I mean, I, I I can definitely see where where he would be effective, but not one that I was like, oh, I gotta. I gotta, I gotta right. try to track that one down. I think he was the one that you. I mean, if you, if you bought the season, yeah, he, he was the premium card, right? Um, he was the card so I, you got. Yeah, he'll he'll be out there available in a little bit, but he's not not one that I'm uh, uh, hankering to to track down. Same, uh, same here. So I mean, have... you know, I just I'm glad that we exist in a world where Modoc is spreading across all manner of media because yeah. it's absurd enough that that he needs to be out there, but. Uh, not not one that's a that's a sentimental favorite for me or uh, or one that I'm clamoring to get. Uh, now there are you. there are a couple of cards. I think Modoc and one other are the highest profile, but there there's a couple that released this season that I definitely want. I did have a chance to play with Ghost just for a couple games, and one of my favorite decks this past season got Quinjet oh, recently. Yeah. So I was like, oh, here we go. I want to make a collector deck and using. Nick Fury and also using Colson, I was able to get Ghost at one point. So nice. you got a Devil Dinosaur in that deck. Uh, it needs there needs to be one in there. I don't know if I got Ghost from that though. Now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I got it from a hub because it's one energy, two power. I don't yeah. think Colson's bringing it. Colson's bringing in three and fours. And Maria uh, Hill, 
I do not have Maria Hill, so okay. I'm I'm a guess, I'm guessing then it had to have been um it had to have been the hub where one of the locations was the hub where it gives you a random card. Or... Could be Sharon Carter. Yes. Or Agent yes. 13. Sorry. Agent 13. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Agent 13 is just totally random. Could be anything. I, I did end up with a, a, a Shayna, Shayna the She Devil. Oh, yeah. Uh, somehow. That one I'm pretty sure is a, a three or a four. And I probably got that from Colson at one point. But Ghost may have popped up because I played her, possibly. But either way, I did have a chance to play with Ghost. I mean, your car. So the, the effect is ongoing. Your cards are always revealed last, which. Yeah, that could call that can create an advantage for some, for sure. Anybody who's got a Shang Chi in their deck that you're facing, you want to go last, <laughs> especially if you got some heavy hitters in there. So, oh that, yeah, and uh, I know um, Rogue and Enchantress that knock out ongoing effects. Yeah, uh, I I try not to play them even if I don't have anything else to play, unless there's actually something for them to play on. Because man, I, I've had uh, oh here's Rogue, no target. Oh, and now here's uh, here's Patriot yeah. boosting up everybody. <laughs> here's Wong. Marvel, yep. Yeah. Did you have a chance to play against Ghost at all? I did not play against Ghost too much. I, I pulled her once, um, and I, I, I liked it. But yeah, that's that's the one out of this season that, that I want the most because there's just so many times that I've had cards where it's like, oh, if only I could have gone uh, gone second. Right. And, uh, I mean, you know, you, you take turns – revealing your cards but it always seems like i go first when i don't need to so i mean gambit is good it's good to have gambit after somebody uh reveals have him uh chuck a card at somebody next one of my favorite was... effects in the game by the way like yeah gambit literally throwing one of the cards that is great so next up is stature five energy for seven power she only costs one though if your opponent discarded a card from their hand clearly an answer a response to uh, people unlocking the season, getting Modoc and building discard decks. You want stature to go up against that. I, I think I ended up with her by accident at one point. I'm sure I, you know, this isn't a card that I have, but I can't remember if I laid her out for one. Actually, I think I did. I think I got her one time in my hand and laid her out for one. You know, it was nice to have. I don't remember if I won or not, but, you know, that was stature. Yeah. I didn't play. I didn't go up against too many people that had her. I had her pop up on mine once, and I want to say it was like a, a Weird World or a District X location. Oh, District so X. I was playing somebody with a discard deck, and I'm like, okay, okay, getting ready to lay down stature. One cost for seven points, and they or seven power. And they never did it because they weren't getting their discard cards. Oh, no, man. Here we go, Cassie. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so Kang, five energy, zero power. But on reveal, you look at what your opponent did, then you restart the turn. So and Jonathan now, Majors devours the scenery. <laughs> oh, no, wait. Okay. <laughs> John of the Majors uh, is awesome as Kang. Just that's what I heard. Kang. That's what I heard. So I did watch somebody on the Marvel Snap Reddit. Uh, they posted something where it says Kang is causing problems or, or something along those lines. And what had happened is, I can't remember exactly how this worked. More, somebody played a morph and the guy had a Kang in his hand and the morph oh, turned man. into Kang. Yeah, so morph turns into Kang and then I think he tries to lay the Kang down. It restarts the turn. And there was like this weird circle going on. I don't know. <laughs> I have I, I, I can't remember the details of it. But anyway, this is um, why you don't mess around with time travel. <laughs> that's right. I never ran into Kang at all. I had him Go played ahead. on me one time. Ooh. And what it was, was like? it, it, it looked pretty cool. I think I ended up playing almost exactly the same thing because I'm like, oh, it's not it's not going to get any better. Let's uh, let's see what they can do. To, to stop it. I, w I wish I could remember the specifics, but I mean, yeah, the, the effects are very cool and it just kind of rewound the turn. And I think I ended up playing pretty much the same way and, uh, and winning that game. I'm going oh, really? to take better notes uh, for, for the next episode, but uh, yeah. it, 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 it was pretty cool to see, but uh, I, I don't, I don't think it, it, uh, it beat me on that one. Yeah. I was wondering if like you were stuck to what you had originally played but obviously that doesn't that yeah. it doesn't sound like that's what the effect does. It sounds no, like it, no, the you, cards go back in your hand, right? Yeah, and then and then you 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 lose Kang, but um I mean it it basically gives you a mulligan on the turn and uh, you've see. got a little bit of an advantage cuz you know what your opponent has. All they know is you had Kang and you don't have Kang now. Right. Right, right. I mean, I guess unless you played Moon Girl and duplicated him, and then you know, who knows? Uh, 
who knows yeah, what happens oh. then. But um, yeah, so it, I mean, you know, it, it gives gives you an idea, and uh, then it's it's not unbeatable because you got to decide. Okay, are they going to come back and do the same thing, or are they going to throw something something different at me? So there's there's still a risk. You just you just know a little bit more than you did before, and I mean, you know, with a guy who's you know a manipulator of time, it's just a really cool way to to get that power into the game. No kidding. No kidding. I mean, I wondered how in the world they were going to make it Do you like time travel stuff, Jesse? I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, just to kind of let you know, I, I do enjoy it just a little bit, a little bit. I wondered how they would actually make this work, and they seem to have pulled it off. So that's actually really cool. He, he was up in the shop. I had a shot at him for 6,000 tokens, but I just uh, – usually I buy stuff for 1,000. The Same. few that I've gotten impatient on, I, I've lucked in the – uh, pulling in collectors caches usually I, w- I wait for a thousand but there's several three thousands that i'm uh saving up for now are you now but six yeah, thousand I, I just i just don't have the patience i probably I know should it's way out of my reach and with you know only getting a hundred tokens like every what third or fourth collector's cash yeah Ugh. but I mean, uh, my gosh but you now they've added i think the last two weeks i hope it's a regular thing token tuesday you seen that no, uh, no. What's it do? I've heard of it, but I don't. Remember it's like it eight hundred and fifty gold or something like that, and you get maybe eight hundred tokens or something like that. I mean, you get a, a good. I don't think you get a thousand, but you get a, a nice chunk of tokens. Well, I did see the token Tuesday stuff, but I just never, yeah, I never jumped so, in and looked at it. I mean, what what you're what you're giving up is stuff like those that Devil Dinosaur pack and the Deadpool Day pack. That I, those are those are two that I've gotten. Mm-hmm. And I thought about grabbing the Valentine's Day one with Daredevil and Electra just because I didn't have Daredevil yet, but I I did I did did uh, get him as as a prize. Which I mean that's that's the other thing is even with the the stuff you're not spending, I mean you you've got a chance to to get get the cards. And so far I haven't seen any way like one card that's just make or break. I've seen some that are really cool, but you know I, th- I think they've done a pretty good job of balancing it. So you know you can. You can kind of pick and choose what you want, but I, I at least haven't felt like I have to get this card or that card. Right. You know, I mean, Black Panther, I, honestly, I, I was saving up for Silver Surfer, and then I got smacked with a Shuri Red Skull combo. So <laughs> You're 30 like, points. I've got to have that. <laughs> and so I was like, you know what? I, I should have gotten Shuri when I had the chance, so I'm going to save up. I'm, I'm going to let Silver Surfer go, going to save up for Shuri. And then Black Panther came in. And mm-hmm. I think Shuri's probably the better card, the more useful card. But um, you, you know how I feel about the Christopher Priest run of Black Panther. Uh, oh, I yeah. liked Black Panther before it was cool. And that, that's a good card. So so Black Panther is who I've got pinned right now. Well, that's all right. You, that's a good one. Thanks a lot for joining us. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next installment of Snap Material. Snap Material.